Chapter 4 Flora A few days later, dressed in all black, Flora and her mother sat alongside the other invited guests at Armin's funeral. Many of them were old tributes, selected relatives, friends, children, and lovers of previous Hope Runners that were financially compensated for their sacrifice. For no Hope Runner was an island. The mayor, on a podium in front of them, had just given a beautiful eulogy when she stunned the city. With permission from Armin's selected tribute and family, I have an announcement to make, the mayor said, following it up with a sip of water. Extraordinary times call for extraordinary measures. Armin's return from beyond the anomaly gave us proof that our hope was not for nothing. Not only did he return, but he survived for longer than his mech would have kept him alive. Given this urgent matter, the city saw it fit to host a new, extraordinary Hope Runner Championship, four years ahead of schedule. Gasps from the public behind them echoed through the great roundabout. When the gridlock was formalized, the city demolished the center of the city to create a monument, a gigantic roundabout with a park in the middle. The roads surrounding it were empty, serving as a reminder of what one day could exist again. One of those gasps was Flora's. If there was ever a time to become a hope runner, it was then. The mayor continued, Instead of one hope runner, we will crown three hope runners. We will expedite many parts of it, including a faster selection process of competing runners and shortened trials, only two. While the budget does not allow us to host a championship for another four years, we have declared a state of emergency and shifted allocation from other public spending measures, such as our salaries, to ensure this can proceed. The Mech Institute will rally to produce new long-distance mechs with the utmost advanced technology we have available. In this moment of grief, there is also hope, and we are as close as we've ever been to finding out the truth. More details will soon be shared. I will now give over to Armin's partner and tribute, Argent Winslow. A woman with short, scruffy blonde hair dressed in all black walked up to the podium. It looked like she had some tattoos on her face, but from their chairs, Flora couldn't entirely make it out. Hi, Argent started. The city watched as she took in the view. She paused for a moment, coughing back grief. Like the city did with Armin a year ago, a roaring, cheering swell rose for Argent. Her eyes darted around the city in disbelief and wonderment at what was happening. She laughed nervously. Flora couldn't imagine what roller coaster she must have been through in the past few days. Soon after Armin's death, the city revealed that it was cardiac arrest. That it happened right at the door to the city left many of the citizens wondering if there was a cover-up. It was almost too neat. Regardless, there were answers that the city received. Given what existed in Armin's long-distance mech, he survived longer than what the technology would have allowed beyond the anomaly. They built the long-distance mechs to safely house people in case the atmosphere beyond the anomaly was inhospitable. He was kept alive, somehow. But as with each new answer, it bred additional questions. They equipped his mech with cameras, and the citizens have been asking for the footage. Alas, that too would remain unknown. His cameras were missing, ripped off from his mech. Did the city take them off? Was it something beyond the anomaly? Did Armin himself rip them off? These were all questions that hovered over Armin's funeral. He was dead. And that was the first time that a hope runner had given any answer at all. It wasn't exactly what the city wanted, but it was what they received. Poor Argent. I know now what he must have felt, she said, spurring on another roar of cheers. Before Armin was your hope runner, he gave me and my daughter hope. The Armin you saw is the Armin that my daughter and I grew to love. We were lucky to know him before we had to share him with all of you. Four years ago, we were out on the streets, having drummed up the courage to leave a relationship that tortured us. We could not even afford a car in the gridlock. We were left behind, with no prospects of leaving the fate that was given to us. Armin found us one day and took us to a local restaurant to serve in the kitchens. There, I learned to get back on my own two feet and take care of my daughter. My spirit started walking again and eventually learned to run. Armin didn't see us as forgotten. 
He was truly a hope runner for all of us in the city. From those who live in the penthouses to those who grew up without a family in the trunks. That is the testament to the man he was. Before it mattered, he cared to give hope to someone who thought they would never walk on their own two feet again. Argent took a quivering breath before she continued. Last year, Armin told us that it was not a goodbye. I still contend that it is not. He left us with the hope we yearned for. He gave it to us. We know that he survived longer than his mech would have allowed him. There are others out there. He found our hope, and now it is up to us to not let that die. I was privileged enough to help Armin train. There's only one way to give back. After speaking to my daughter Piper, she said, looking back at her daughter in the crowd, I have decided to enter this year to become your hope runner. Whispers rippled through the crowd. This is the time, and I hope that in this moment, I encourage many others to also apply. It's what Armin would have wanted. Some people cheered, while others didn't quite understand how to process the scenario. Flora's jaw was on the floor. She looked at her mother, whose face did not reveal any strong emotion. Her mother turned to her. She has no idea what this will do to her child. Ridiculous, Madeira said. Flora dropped her emotion from her face and looked back at the ceremony. As much as she wanted to concentrate on the rest of the eulogies, her heart had taken control. She had to enter. After about 30 minutes lost in a daze trying to figure out how to do this without upsetting her mother, the mayor came back on stage. Thank you all. It's clear we lost a hero. Let's continue in his footsteps to provide hope. That concludes the public commemoration of Armin. The procession of his mech through the city will commence tomorrow. The city cheered through their tears as the ceremony concluded. Coming back to reality, Flora noticed that her mother was listlessly staring at the ground. Are you okay? Flora asked, wrapping her arm over her mother. It's so ridiculous. They parade us old tributes around at this funeral and all we get in return is our pain. Look at the other tributes. None of them are happy. Hey mom, listen, it's fine, okay? Remember, we're also here to help, to give hope like dad did. It's okay to be sad, but look, there's also good food we'll miss out, Flora said, cracking a smile, trying to get her mother off the ground. Flora didn't really believe they were there to give hope. It was a farce, but she didn't want to see her mother crying. Madeira laughed through her sobs as Flora hugged her. I don't know what I would do without you, Madeira said. They got up and walked over to the food table. Flora sighed. Any attempt at talking about the Hope Runner Championship would not succeed. They arrived at the buffet to a wide selection, from penthouses garden teas to mid-level craft beers to trunks curries. Madeira aimed for the teas and confectionery. Flora for a trunks curry. Madeira shook her head in disapproval. We have the best food available here and you choose a trunks curry? Look, apple pie cakes. You know how rare the apples are, and these teas? Ugh, I never knew how you developed a taste for those curries. You just need Esper to take you to the good spots in the trunks. And what, get mugged and all that filth down there? No thank you, my dear. It's not like that. It's definitely not the penthouses, that's for sure, Madeira said as she rolled her eyes and wolfed down some tiny pies. After eating, they trekked back home through the streets. On the way, Flora could see that her mother was still struggling. When they rounded a corner, Flora noticed the pamphlets strewn all over, all asking citizens to apply to become a hope runner. Her mother sneered at the pamphlets. They keep saying that they won't fix this, won't fix that, because of money. But suddenly they pull this out of the bag. Typical. I guess if the city keeps people's hopes up, people will buy more cars and they'll make enough money from the gridlock's taxes to pay for it? Flora answered with a question. Exactly, Madeira exclaimed taking more money from the poor who will be stuck dead last in the exodus anyway. Watch. They said they funneled money from their salaries, but they won't stop there. They will probably want to shake things up and take more money from us somehow. I know. Flora took her mother's word for the truth. Madeira did, after all, work as a legislative assistant in her younger years. Flora picked up a pamphlet. She wanted to do it. 
and she hoped that perhaps by giving the pamphlet a thorough read, it might give her the permission she needed to apply. The pamphlet said nothing new, an expedited championship, three hope runners as winners instead of one, two trials instead of three, millions as payment to the champion's selected tributes. She stuffed it in her jacket. Her mother stopped in her tracks. What are you doing? Oh, this? Flora asked as she took out the pamphlet again and looked at it. Thought it would be a good memento for, you know. Her mother's stare lingered. It would not work. She crumpled the pamphlet and threw it away. Flora, please. You can do anything, absolutely anything. But please, don't run. Please. I won't relax, Flora said, feeling like a teenager again. She paced ahead of her mother. I've given you so much. I've allowed you to do so much. Even questionable things no other mother would. Please don't ask that of me. I can't do it again. Flora stopped and turned back to her mother, not entirely meeting her eyes. I won't. I've said it countless times. Let's go. Madeira inhaled a troubled breath and continued. As soon as they entered the bus, however, Madeira broke down in tears. Flora consoled her. Flora! Madeira said, shivering. River is dead. We never had his funeral. If Armin came back, why didn't River come back? Hey, listen, Flora said as she held her mother's hands. That's not true, okay? Dad is alive. Like you've always told me, there's no funeral and there won't be because he is still alive. The city told us that Armin survived longer than the mech would have allowed him. So someone is out there beyond the anomaly. They helped Armin. Madeira bowed her head again. I don't know how long I can keep pretending. You are not pretending. Dad is alive, okay? Madeira started trembling as the silence enveloped them. Flora buried her desire for the truth and took a deep breath. Things will be okay. Let's get some rest. It's been a tough day. Madeira muttered an okay as Flora ushered her to her bedroom in the taxi next door. Flora returned to her bunk at the back of the bus, lying down next to the city lights that were peering through the windows. She pulled out her phone and scrolled through the headlines. Residents furious at losing their cars due to sudden market volatility. Armin, 2089 to 2131, a life in pictures. Mech Institute scientists adamant that new long-distance mechs will be ready. Parliament to hold public consultation to address legislative changes to public car markets. Hope Runner Office to continue championship despite claims of political favoritism. Alcove Turner release debut to wide acclaim. She kept scrolling to avoid feeling. She hoped that somewhere in the web of information permeating her feed might be an answer. She navigated to the Hope Runner Championship website. The bright light from her phone was all she could see. There it was. An opportunity. She closed the browser and set her alarm. Despite the darkness, she knew her reality. A bus called home. She's always felt guilty about what had happened. She never meant for her mother to lose the money she leveraged in the car markets. She only wanted to help. The scribbles on the bus window in front of her contained stories she would never know. A long time ago, when this bus still drove, a couple carved their love into it. She turned around to see if she could spot her family picture at the front, but the darkness concealed it. 